Good afternoon and welcome to SNS Bushcraft and Survival. We would like to welcome you to the channel. My name is Deke and I'll be your lead instructor slash co-host for this channel. Our other co-host is Michael Sanders. Hello guys. As we said in the description, you know, we're we comprise of Eagle Scout and prior military. But I wanted to start this video, you know, as the axiom of threes. You know, uh, we're not going to go into them specifically today, but we'll be talking about them soon enough. But today, I want to talk to you about your bug out bag. Uh, shoot, bug out bag. Also called your bob. Behind me, here in a minute, I'll show you the contents that I carry with me everywhere I go. You'll find it in my truck. I always have it with me. I always recommend having multiple bug out bags for different locations, i.e., your vehicle your home, your uh, where you go to work, always have something with you. I actually have two in my truck, but this is my primary and it's to, not just to save myself in case of an emergency, but my family who's always with me. Can I give y'all a quick look of everything that I carry with me every time I leave the house? And some of the stuff I have multiples of. All right, now that you have a overview of what this is, let's talk about what some of the stuff is, shall we? We're gonna start back here in the back. This, of course, is the bag. Also, I wanna let you know that the bag and most of the stuff I get is fairly inexpensive. You can find it at any um, like hunting place, sporting goods stores, Walmart, Amazon. Some of this comes from these various places. The bag itself, you can buy. Uh, I found it at Rural King for under $100. It's a five day emergency bag. Uh, I've added to it, of course. But just something to think about with your bug out bags. You want them as light as you can get them with all the necessities that you need. I may have more than what I need, but everything that I have is for long term use. Okay. But this is the bag that everything I have everything in. Of course y'all see is camo on the bag itself I have very sized D rings I have my folding shovel which I have one set up over here I have a set of four emergency blankets I have another emergency blanket here and then of course the emergency ponchos now on the in case you're stuck out at night time I have various flashlights that I carry of course, the military, this is small for map reading. Now, I do not have a map with me. It's actually at another location at the moment. But for those that don't have batteries or you run out of batteries, this is a simple push button wind up. It's actually kind of bright for what it is. All right, I have my headlamp, two low powered. This is hard to see, but two low-powered pin lights. It also has emergency mode. Anyone that knows me knows I prefer red over blue. Of course, the standard uh, Ozark Trail flashlight. Then I have my more powerful flashlights. This one is battery-operated. Both of these are rechargeable, which I prefer. Now, if you're out and about and you happen to get lost, of course, this is one of one of many kind of compasses that you can have. I actually have more than that. Like I said, I have multiple bug out bags in multiple locations. And of course, we're not filming at our regular location that we will be filming out in the future. Uh, this is on private property that me and my brother both own. All right, one of the other things that you're going to need while you're out on survival mode is emergency food. This is a big priority. Uh, if you know by about the axiom of threes, one of the one of the ingredients in the axiom of threes is water. Okay. As you can see, I have various food, milk. I have a 2,400 calorie protein bar that's good for five years, and of course, five bags of emergency water. But you say to yourself, "But five bags of water—that's not enough." 
you're right, it's not. Normal person needs at least a gallon of water a day to avoid dehydration. We will get to that shortly. All right, we're going to step to the back. It's going to be easier to do this way. Now, you're going to have to have a way to prepare food and stuff like that, right? All right. Well, I have various hatchets that can be used to split wood. This one is my favorite. It doubles as a hammer, and I use it all the time. And, of course, my machete that I picked up at Walmart with a multi-use knife. It can be used as a fish hook, can opener, bottle opener. It has wrenches on it. It can be used as a screwdriver. And it comes with a hard shell case, which is really great. This Bowie knife, unfortunately, is... Excuse me a minute, fam. Alright, sorry about that, fam. But this is a very old Bowie knife that I've had for forever. Unfortunately, I've let it get rusty. Uh, I will be cleaning this up before next use. You know, it's good for multiple things. Uh, you can even use it to split small pieces of wood. Now this is my everyday carry knife that I carry with me everywhere that I go. It's lightweight, it's functional, I love this knife. Also comes with a hard case. This of course is a survival knife that I picked up at Harbor Freight. It is a uh, survival knife, you can do multiple things with it, I love it. It's lightweight, it's made out of aluminum, it's extremely sharp, you can cut trees. Can you hold this for a minute Michael? <laughs> Now, what's cool about this, let me turn this up just a little bit, there we go. Alright, inside the survival knife, of course, is a little pin, uh, compass, I don't really, I can't really care for those, but I will use them if I have to. This little bag is a little hard to get out. It's kind of a good thing, but a bad thing. Inside the little bag, of course, you have your fishing line with string. Also has a hook in it. Strike Anywhere matches. It's waterproof. And a little sewing kit. And you can pick this up retail is about $8. So, I mean, it's not bad. Uh, you can also use it to make spears out of, which is a good thing. Especially if you're trapping and you don't have a defensive weapon. And while we're talking about defensive weapons, the last thing you want to use in a, de in a defensive situation is a knife. And of course, each of these knives have different purposes. Alright, I have in the front my throwing knives. And if you haven't learned how to use these, I advise you to learn because that can come in handy. Especially with hunting. My little skinning knife. This is a SOG jungle warrior machete and of course you have to have a way to cut trees and limbs and stuff and I have, so I have my folding saw all right now we talked about the folding shovel I apologize for that fam I live right by a main road this is the folding shovel that's inside my bag it does as a pickaxe saw shovel or you can also get this style, which is a little bit bigger. I actually, as y'all can see, I've used this one here recently. But you can break it down to make it into a, to like a little hoe as well. All right, now you got to have cordage. That is a necessity. I recommend. I mean, you can buy it fairly cheap. I think it's like nine dollars at Walmart for fifty feet of paracord. I suggest you get it, and I'll explain why. As you can see, the paracord has many different strands of string in it. This was broke down here. Minus, and of course, that's my twine. And it can be used for various things. Of course, this one's camouflaged. You can get it in various colors. Like I said, I have my twine. It's good for, you know, that's good for making shelter, uh, hanging food, hanging your pots, pans, if you have that kind of setup. Um, it can be used for trapping. Uh, yeah, it can be used for marking locations. I mean, it's just unlimited use. 
So make sure you always have some, uh, at least 50 feet of paracord in your pack. Okay. Now, you have to have a way to, to cook everything, right? Alright. Well, this right here is a fairly inexpensive cook set that I've picked up. It's one of many that I have, actually. It comes, of course, with a pot. I mean, it's, it's got some depth to it. Comes with two bowls. Comes with two sporks. So it's good for two people, right? Well, you have to have a way to open things. So here's a can opener, which can also double as other things. This is old military style. Love them. I actually have multiple pieces. I have, of course, my collapsible cup that comes with a lid handy to have with you and of course a little tin cup to boil water in if needed now you're saying I have to have a way to, to start all this stuff right okay well there's different ways that you can make fire which a lot of this stuff will go in in future videos but here we go what I carry in my pack no this is not medicine if I can do this one-handed, which I cannot, give me one second. I got it. It is impregnated cotton balls. Now, me and Michael was discussing this earlier. What exactly is an impregnated cotton ball? Well, it's simple. What you do is you take some petroleum jelly, you smear this cotton ball on the petroleum jelly, put it in a container, and there you go. There's your fire starter, and it starts pretty quickly. You can also use steel wool. Strike anywhere it matches. You have two different kinds of magnesium or fer uh, ferrocium rods that you can use. This is my everyday carry. I actually wear it everywhere I go. It works great. Uh, I've never had to really use this one. But this this uh, rectangle here, I've actually used quite a bit. Not this particular one, of course. But it works fairly great. And I will show you in the future how to use these. Okay. You have a camp stove for cooking with the fuel tabs. I thought I had one more thing. Guess not. Alright. Now, we saw about water. You have to have a way to purify water, right? Well, I picked up this little uh, water filtration unit. It'll filter up to, I think it's like 100,000 gallons of water. I, mean, I haven't tried it because I don't want to mess up the shelf life on it. But it's good to have. Water purification tablets. Now, one thing I forgot to show y'all, I mean, everyone has these, there's easy to find, it goes with your knife set, is your whetstone. Have to have a way to keep your knives sharp. And of course, it goes with them, I have it separate from my knives, so, there we go. We're going to kind of sort of jump around from here, because there's different things. All right. Now, Axiom of Threes, which I will talk about the Axiom of Threes at the end of this video. Uh, you have to have a defensive weapon. Now, as I said just a few minutes ago, a knife is the last thing you want to use as a defensive weapon. This is what we carry. Of course, I'm the oddball out, but we have 9mm with extra magazines. We do have extra magazines with them. And, of course, I'm the one that carries the big 45, and I have my extra ammo as needed plus I have two magazine pouches single I'll show you all the difference for those that don't know because I know I got some viewers overseas that's never really seen guns that's the size of a nine millimeter round that's the size of a 45 round now you see why I carry a bigger gun Some of the other things that you can include in your tent is comfort items. <coughs> Excuse me. Hot hands are good for that. Uh, if you have a way to, like, say, use your twine, you can tie some to your toes, to the tops of your feet to keep your toes warm. Bottom of your feet to keep the bottom of your feet warm. You can put them in your, your pockets of your jacket. You have to make shelter. So I have various style... Uh, tent stakes that we can use now for the stuff that I have that requires charging like say cell phones or those flashlights I have a four panel solar charger that I carry 
had it for years, love it, use it all the time. For night travel, we have a night vision monocular or night vision goggles. Gloves to protect your hands. Some sanitation items, which some of this will double as a fire starter. Like, for instance, your hand sanitizer. You know, it's got alcohol in it, so it's a good uh, fire starter for you. You have your antiseptic wipes. Your little napkins. I carry two bars of little hand soap with me. We have our 36-piece first aid emergency kit with tourniquet for hand safety. I have a pair of durable gloves. And to help kill some of the boredom if you're by yourself, I have one pack of playing cards. Now some of the other stuff that I carry with me everywhere that I go, I'll get that in a minute, is of course my this is a bulletproof stab proof vest I take it everywhere I go uh, there's been some jobs that I've actually had to wear this for my protection but inside of it I have it complete with collapsible baton spots for extra ammo uh, this pouch I use for my rifle which is not out here my extra magazines for my pistol radio and then, of course, miscellaneous pouch that I keep a flashlight and rubber gloves in, latex. Now, to help, care, uh, to help out whenever I'm carrying a long gun, such as a shotgun or a rifle, I prefer my law enforcement gun belt, complete with interchangeable leg holster. Got my cuffs for my safety, flashlight holder, another baton, and of course my extra magazine, and my pepper spray, which is good, not only for people trying to cause you harm, but also for animals, which I will be replacing that with bear spray real soon, because the property that we have that's, that we just bought not too long ago does have bears on it. And of course, the biggest thing that you can have for shelter is the tarp itself that all this stuff's laid out on. I do carry this tarp with me. I do have straps for my bug out bag that I keep the tarp and blankets in. I always carry two blankets. Um, I suggest getting wool blankets because two wool blankets is good for, I think it's like negative 20 degrees if they're stacked on top of each other. On top of they're good whether they're wet or dry. So I recommend that. Now, a lot of y'all won't have a lot of this stuff. You know, it, of course it takes time to, to get all this stuff together. A lot of times, you have only what you can carry on your person. Okay, that's not a problem. Like I said, if you notice my ferocium rod, I've made a lanyard for it. I wear it around my neck as a necklace. It's made of paracord. My sniper bullet is made on paracord. My dog tags, the chain itself can be used for multiple things. Uh, you know, it's, let's just say empty your pockets right now. Let's see what you got. Okay? That's not a problem. For me, my, my, vehicle keys. I have enough paracord on my keychain to make whatever I need for there. And also I have another small piece here. I also carry a multi-tool knife and screwdriver set. Keys can be used for different things. If your electronics work, I do have mass storage. I keep a lot of important stuff on that. Uh, some of the other things that I carry on person you never go wrong with a good multi-use tool. Love this one as all the blades lock in place. I do prefer a one that locks because it'll save your hands in the long run. Trust me. Some of the other things that I carry. Quick open knife. Use You can use a knife for everything. Something that a lot of people don't think about. 
and can be used for a lot of things. If I can get the darn thing to open because the kids will be messing with it. A little nail set. Comes with scissors, great for cutting through the twine. The fingernail clippers, good for cutting through twine. Various ink pens that I carry with me. And I'll show you why in a minute. All right, that's just my right pocket. Never hurts to have a little handy flashlight. Of course, this ain't the brightest in the world, but you know, in a, any situation, it'll work. Multiple lighters. It'll last longer than matches, which I prefer getting matches, or getting a lighter over matches. Chapstick. You always want to protect your lips. Let's see what else I have in here. That don't work. Don't work for nothing. I have various, you know, like I said, various things in my pocket. So, you know, with just that right there, you know, if you know how what you're doing and how to use this stuff, you can survive for a little while with just those few things. Uh, there's stuff on my jacket itself that I could use to make shelter out of. My holster, make sure I ain't got nothing else in my pockets. And of course, one of the most important things is you want to carry a little notebook with you. This is one I use to carry and uh, write my notes in, you know, give directions, stuff like that. And just show you some of the importance things that we will be talking about. If you hold this. Michael don't talk much, as y'all can tell. He leaves most of the talking to me, Charlie, trying to get the camera set up. Now, some of the things that we will be talking about is, of course, our axiom of threes. Four critical elements when looking for a place to build a shelter. Five seasons of survivability for bobs, which is what this is. And the ten seasons of survivability overall. I got more notes I'm going to be adding in here. But, you know, y'all keep hearing me talk about the axiom of threes. All right, here's exactly what the axiom of the threes are. You can survive three weeks without food, three days without water. You can survive three hours without shelter. You can survive three minutes without air. You can survive three seconds without any defensive weapon. I do believe in that. There's a lot of truth in a lot of that. And we will be making videos on all of this stuff for y'all. Like I said, we don't claim to be experts on none of this stuff by no means. But what we do know, we would like to pass on to y'all. So maybe you know if you ever have to use this stuff you'll have the know-how and of course the biggest thing is to get out and practice everything just because you have it doesn't necessarily mean you know how to use it you have to keep yourself familiar with everything you have like this is the first time that Michael has seen what's all in this bug out bag that I carry everywhere I go he's actually surprised at the amount of stuff I have in it but like I said I carry enough stuff for me and my family is five little bags of food gonna be enough to provide food for me my wife and my three kids no I'm gonna survive I'm going to rely on my survival skills to forage for food to hunt to trap I will teach you how to do that in these upcoming videos uh, not necessarily gonna say I'm going to actually trap food but I'll show you how to do it and a special note and Boy Scouts one of the, the main things is always be prepared. So as you saw what Deke has in his pockets, I'm going to show you what I have in mine. And we'll see who survives the longest. <laughs> Cell phone and lighter. I'm not going to make it very long. Well, see, I have my cell phone too, so. Of course, y'all heard it go off earlier. But, you know, cell phones can be used. Like, let's, for instance, say an EMP strike happens, okay? You can make yourself a Mylar box or what we call EMP shield box out of mylar to protect your stuff. If you don't have mylar, not a problem. Get a shoe box, wrap it with uh, aluminum foil inside and out, and put a cell phone in. That's active. Call the cell phone so you have no service. When you have no service on that phone, that's when your stuff's ready to, to protect. Uh, I do have one of those boxes upstairs in my room. Uh, I do keep one cell phone in because I have a lot of survival information on a memory card in my cell phone that's also on that pen drive that I showed you. Uh, 
but you can break the cell phone down to make other things because there's other things that I have that you can use to start fires like I don't know what my kids did with it it was in my pocket my daughter got in my pants while I was in bed one night and took it I have a massive magnifying lens perfect for creating fire oh you know where it is okay Michael knows where it is that's all right figures uh, like I said fam just everything I have I did not get overnight it took time to get I have more survival stuff that I will show you in the future uh, there's other things that we can talk about as far as survival but you know if you have questions about anything feel free to leave a comment you can email us at ssbushcraftandsurvival at gmail.com uh, my email is in the bio for the channel itself I'll be happy to discuss anything with you. Uh, be happy to talk about in depth more stuff that we have that we can be using. But like I said, this is just my my bob, my bug out bag, my emergency bag that I go to when traveling for me and my family. And a special note too is, as you can see, how Deke utilized the pill bottles. That's other things that you can do. You can keep. You can store. Because you never know what you can use with that. A lot of containers that close are waterproof inside. Yes. Matter of fact, I have one that I forgot to talk about. It actually came with the bag. And of course, y'all can pick these up fairly cheap. You know, some multi piece whistle, flint, storage container, another what I call a pen compass. And inside is a signaling mirror. Now, me and Michael were talking about this earlier. Well, what about flares and things of that nature? Me personally, I mean, everybody can do their own thing. I don't believe in carrying that for the simple fact of if I'm in survival mode, why do I want everybody to know where I am? Something to think about. And like you said, it's it's dependent on your situation. Because I mean, if last, you know, the last thing, um, best way to put it, like a flare can actually be used as a fire starter. I mean, it is phosphorus, um, a light source. However, you know, if, if you're trying to stay under the radar, then it, it's not the best. But, again, everything has its own purpose and has multiple purposes. So a lot of things that you wouldn't think have meaning or um, purpose, you know, you're wrong. Which brings me to another note. We're talking about water purification. One other thing that I don't have out here with me, it's actually in another bob at the moment is I have a uh, 20 ounce metal bottle with a D-ring clip on the end that I carry with this bob. I, just, I think it's in the house. I think I just washed it the other night. So, you know, you want to have a way to uh, carry water, boil water, which I will show you uh, in some upcoming videos how to purify water. Uh, my wife Amanda and Michael thinks I'm lying when I say you can boil water in a plastic bottle. I will show you how. Some of the other stuff I don't have with me that I will be adding to this bob that I keep forgetting to grab every time I'm out and about. Leather strap. There's unlimited things for leather strap, especially around a fire. And I will show you in the future how to make fire tools to help combat having to use your hands. Also, something else you want to think about is comfort. That's part of the five C's of your bug out bag. Um, as a matter of fact, while we're at it, let's go over that. The five C's of the bug out bag. Oops. Oh, I'm dropping everything. Sorry, fam. I'll fix all this in editing. <laughs> Michael's like, give me the damn camera. Yo, dummy. All right, let's try this again. Like Sorry, said, guys. I'm a little tall. All right. Now, let's see if we have, we should have most of this covered, right? Cutting tools to manufacture needed items. And processed food. Well, I think we have that covered. Cover elements to create a microclimate of protection from the elements. All right, we have the tarp for uh, making tents, and I will show you how to make tents out of various materials. We also have the tarps and emergency blankets. You also have the clothes that's on your back, so always pack accordingly. Combustion elements for creating the fires needed not only to preserve and cook food, but also to make medicines and provide needed warmth. All right, that's your fire starter stuff that we have. I'll be showing you how to use all this stuff in the future on top of how to make ways to transport fire from one location to the next. Containers, 
to carry water over distances or to protect collected food sources. Right now in this bob, the only container I have, of course, is my pan and the bags itself that it comes in. Uh, I do have a couple of Ziploc bags that I carry as well, but it's not good for you know, water, but it is good for uh, food stuff. And, of course, cordages for bindings and lashings. Now, one of the things that it did leave out is number six is, I think, unless I read it, was comfort items. Like I said, clothing is the biggest one. Uh, with your bob, you always want to make sure you have at least two sets of clothing for warm weather and cold weather because you never know what the climate's going to be where you're at. Like here lately, you know, the weather's been hot one day, cold the next. Hot, cold, hot, cold. You know, it's like we woke up this morning, it was freezing cold where we live at. Okay? It was even colder on our property that we bought. But by the afternoon, it was hot when it was already peeling out of our jackets. And it's already starting to turn cold again. So you always want to make sure you have that stuff with you. Uh, I'm trying to think if there's some other stuff that you have. Oh yeah, hats. Hats are a big thing as well for your protection. Uh, it primarily protects you from the sun. It also helps keep warmth in on cold days. Various styles of hats. When I'm actually in survival mode, I'm not wearing this hat. I'm actually wearing a boonie hat that's also part of my ghillie suit. I'll be showing that in future videos as well, especially when we get down to camouflage and making tents. And one of the things that Dick's talking about, about comfort too, is the ponchos that are waterproof, they also retain 90% of your heat. Yes. So you can use that. I mean, even if it's not raining, you can still use it if it's cold. Oh, yes. Everything that we have set out here that I carry everywhere can be used at any given time. But I just wanted to give you all kind of an idea of what you need for your pack. Like I said, you don't have to do as, as much as I did because you do want to keep it light. My pack is extremely heavy. But that's what I'm accustomed to being in the military. You know, when we go out on patrol, you had 80-pound rucksacks. So, you know, this is what I'm used to. I also have a means to transport all this stuff as needed uh, in the form of a wagon. You know, I'll hook it to another bug out bag that I carry. Uh, like I said, I have multiple bug out bags. This right here is... Sorry about that, fam. My camera died. I had to do a charge on it real fast. And of course, as you can see, it's now dark out here. But like I was saying, you know, I have various bug out bags for various things. Uh, everybody in the house... Everybody in the family has one. Uh, my other ones is primarily clothes. Uh, so you always want to carry clothes with you as well as part of your comfort items. You know, as I was saying earlier, with, especially with this weather, it's hot, cold, hot, cold. So, you, you know, you really don't know how to pack. So, you know, you want to make sure you carry something for summertime, something for wintertime. Make sure you have a good durable jacket to take with you as well. Some of the other things that you need to add to your bag is I recommend two wool blankets per person in your family because when you combine two wool blankets you're it's good for temperatures of up to I think it's like negative 20 so you know it's good for extreme cold and wool blankets is, is good whether they're wet or dry you know you'll just be a little itchy but you know I'd rather take itchy over freezing to death but I do have ways that I carry this because whenever we're out doing uh, survival stuff we do use multiple bags on top of we carry extra food stuff with us if we don't feel like hunting and trapping uh, you can buy things like say at Walmart I don't have them with me uh, they're down in my storage space right now but little 72 hour buckets of food they're fairly inexpensive I think they're like $25 they're great to have all you do is add water and that's how most of my food is is, is just add water yeah, as y'all can see, it's getting cold out here. But, uh, I want to thank y'all for watching this video with me tonight. If y'all have any questions or would like to know more on something, feel free to hit me up in the comment section. You can shoot us an email. The email is in the bio for the channel. It's SNS, or I'm sorry, it's SS Bushcraft and Survival at gmail.com. You know, I'll. I'll actually get back with you. I'm not like most YouTubers. I will definitely get back in touch with you. If there's something you want to know, just let me know. You know, I'll, I'll do my best to explain it or make a video to show how to do it.
But when you're out and about, just be safe. Keep your head on a swivel. Remember to keep your powder dry. We will see y'all in the next video.